Huge pieces of equipment operating only a few feet apart. The harvest fields are deadly. They've been having a lot of accidents in these dirt roads. Part of a grain elevator collapses, killing two young men. Led by the crew boss. Can okay, I just go to the left, Tim, and dump right on that truck? You can't even stop to take a piss without his permission. Just got them trucks checked. Oil and stuff. Let's get it done. We got 135 acres over here, and I am not driving away from it. We're gonna go cut it. Racing north from Texas in May to Canada in August, custom cutters like this crew can cut enough wheat every day to make about four million loaves of bread. They risk financial ruin if they fall behind as the harvest moves north 15 miles a day. How come you don't pull a service truck up here and use tools on that something? Every time. Just took a month to get a train. Five Aussies and one Kiwi. And in Iceland and in Ireland and the Wales, Danes or two, a couple of Americans. I got a little bit everywhere. Like guys who've gone to war together, the bonds between crew members run deep. <laughs> Laughing, fighting, and flirting with local girls from the farming communities. Anything else on your Facebook? I looked at those photos last night, didn't we, Skip? Yeah, you got a couple of photos last night. What's your name? What's the hell's the bikini? Everybody's got a moment. In South Dakota, you have spring and winter wheat. And in between, we all, all the harvesters, all the guys, all the crews all go to the Missouri River. We just spend like two days out there and you just have a blast. Extreme conditions. The wind died down, we left down there, couldn't get her. 100 degree heat, dust storms, cramped living conditions, and weeks of 18 hour work days without a break. If we get done Saturday, they might get the 4th of July. My dad has been doing this his whole life. I just kind of got worn into it, really. <laughs> Okay. The boys cut a lot of wheat in a lot of different places today.